What are you looking at, Joe? Good morning. 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 Hi, Shavi. Okay, get done with your milk. We'll do the commentary. Good morning, everybody. It is September 22nd already, and today is a Tuesday. Look at that, something. <laughs> It's a Tuesday morning. So today we have a very short gospel. It comes from St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 19 to 21. So let's give a background to this story that we're going to hear today because uh, the gospel of St. Luke that we are quoting takes only uh, a very brief part of this. So... Let's try and give a background. So, you know, our Lord left home, right? He left home and he started when he was 30 years old, that is, and, you know, started his public ministry, right? So he first went to the River Jordan to be baptized by St. John the Baptist. And then he went around already, started, you know, putting together his uh, crew of apostles beginning with John, and then there was Nath Philip, and then there was Nathaniel, and then there was uh, Andrew, and then there was um, um, Peter. And then yesterday we heard a story of the calling of Matthew, right? So, he, our Lord was busy, was busy putting together uh, his ministry. And he goes about in different towns preaching, the, the good news, right? So he must have been so busy, so busy, so busy. Once in a while, he would rest and go to uh, the house of his friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, right? Okay. And once in a while, he would go up to a high mountain to pray. Very good, right? So this is the way our Lord rested. But... Even while our Lord was going about preaching and resting and being with friends and being with family, maybe it wasn't very easy for his own mother and his own uh, um, childhood friends and cousins to have some kind of private time with him. Right? Uh, uh, I suppose uh, his his mother and his own childhood friends and his cousins and neighbors wanted to also have some kind of, you know, private time and spend more time with Jesus. But it was so hard to do that because Jesus was so itinerant and he was going all over the place and he wants to preach all the time, right? So one day, when Our Lady must have heard that Jesus was nearby, not quite around, um, maybe not quite around their own neighborhood, but nearby. So Our Lady perhaps expressed her desire to see Jesus and see, you know, uh, I want to go see my son. I heard he's somewhere over here, a few miles away. Okay? And then maybe his neighbor said, oh, really? Is he there? Well, we'll come with you. We'll accompany you. Let's go and visit Jesus. Right? And so they went. And they found Jesus in this town. The town is unknown, unknown here, unnamed. Uh, they must have found Jesus in this town, in this place. And, uh, and they wanted to see Jesus. And he must have been accompanied by a large crowd of people. And he must have been preaching and all that. And then somebody tapped him and said, hey, uh, Jesus, uh, excuse me, you know, your mother, your mother and your, your brethren are outside. They want to see you, right? So imagine the excitement of Our Lady and the excitement of these, of these people. We, we could see Jesus. Come on, yeah, Jesus is here, right? And you would imagine that Jesus would have been excited as well, right? What, you know? My mother is here. Oh, uh, hey, my mother is here, you know. Uh, let, let me introduce my mother to all of you, right? And uh, it would have been the most natural reaction, right? 
And everybody would have been happy and pleased perhaps to, oh, uh, see the mother of Jesus. But Jesus always not wanting to miss a teaching moment makes use of that excitement to teach a very important lesson to people. What does he tell these people? The mother of Jesus, and let's quote now the gospel, the mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, your mother and your brothers are outside standing there, and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Wow. That must have been a shocker. See? That must have been a shocker for people to hear. What are you talking about? Your mother and your cousins and your playmates from childhood and your entire neighborhood are there outside excited to see you. And you just douse cold water on their enthusiasm and the excitement of the moment. And you seem to ignore them. And you tell us, you, you even question, who are my mother and my brethren? And you say, my real mother and my real brethren are those who listen to the word of God and act on it. Isn't that an insult to your own mother? Isn't that an insult to your own brethren who are close to you and they love you and they cherish your presence and they, they adore you and they just want to spend some moments with you? What are you talking about, Jesus? Why do you treat your mother this way? Right? But what they do not understand hidden in that seeming retort is that our Lord was actually praising Our Lady. Our Lord was actually praising His own mother because if there's anybody on earth who has listened and keeps listening to the Word of God and keeps acting on it, nothing, nobody has done a better job than His own mother. Eh? No one has done a better job at listening to God and acting on the will of God than his own mother Mary. And so it's actually a praise for Mary. It is a praise for Our Lady. And our Lord is telling his listeners here and he's telling all of us that you want to be my brethren? You want to be close to me? You want to be part of my family? You got to act like my mother did. You got to be like my mother who listens to the word of God and acts on them. And this is what we have to understand through this gospel today, through this gospel story today. All of us have been called to belong to the family of God by virtue of our baptism joseph very good right by virtue of our baptism we have all been called to be children of god we have all become incorporated into the family of god we are all in god's family and part of god's family part of mary's family right the question is are we acting like we are part of the family do we live our lives continuously listening to the word of our Father God? Continuously being attuned to the will of God and to what God wants for us in our lives? Are we constantly asking ourselves what that will of God is? Are we continuously always acting with the dignity 
of a child of God? Or are we rebels? Or are we always going off doing our own thing? Or are we always ignoring what the family of God has to do? And we don't listen and act accordingly. You know, back in the day when nobility and, and, and uh, monarchy was the fashionable way of governing countries in the world, which is actually today, you still have some of those, right? The children of kings and queens, they walk around with a chin up, you know, proud of their heritage, proud of their nobility. We are princes and princesses, right? Children of the noble king. And that they have to act according to that noble status. They are compelled to keep the dignity that befits them as children of kings and queens belonging to a noble family. And that they never dare, they never dare to, to do anything or say anything that is going to take away that noble status. To, to, to diminish the, the, the pride of being, of being a son, a prince, or a princess in the court of the noble king. They wouldn't dare do anything that is going to shame their family and their heritage. By contrast, if you're following the news of the royal family of England, <laughs> you know, the most scandal-laden uh, uh, family, it seems, you know, of modern times, you know, and uh, you have a Prince Harry who is uh, who's throwing away his noble status and wants to uh, live like an ordinary person. And, uh, you know, anyway, <laughs> this is not a critique about nobility or anything like that. But you can see here the contrast between, see, the nobility of old where people, you know, respected their status in life and they... And they acted according to their noble status. And here you have a modern prince who wants to throw away that, that noble status and, and, you know, live his own life his own way, right? Hollywood style, <laughs> married to this Hollywood actress, right? You know, we, we can sometimes act like a Prince Harry. We do not value the nobility the heritage of our Catholic faith, our status as children of God, we many times don't live up to it and we throw it out the window, thinking that it's better to be just a hoi polloi, just be my own self, just do my own thing. Right? We got to be careful about that tendency. We got to be very, very careful about that tendency because it is unnatural for us. The truth is it's unnatural for us in the same manner that it is unnatural for a person who belongs to the noble class of a king's family see, to be acting less than what his dignity entails. So we too have been baptized and incorporated in the family of God. And we too have a responsibility to act, behave, think according to that dignity of children of God. And we cannot do less than that. And if we do, if we do, we are not only insulting our Father God, who is the King, we are also insulting ourselves. We, we are also demeaning ourselves by not acting according to the dignity and the status of children of God. Now, how do we act? How do we, let's put this in, in more concrete terms, how do we become really worthy children of God? Worthy children of the King. How? 
Number one, we need to listen. We need to abide by the will of the king. We need to understand what God wants for each and every one of us. Okay? And act accordingly. Act accordingly. So, let's put this into more concrete terms. For you, for all of us, it really means having to grow in the understanding of the Word of God. Having to grow in the understanding of our faith. Having to grow in living that faith every day in our lives. And when we say living our faith every day in our lives, that translates to one word, which starts with a V. What is that word? How do we put into practice our faith every day? Huh, Sophia? By living the virtues. By living the virtues. Okay? So, we may know matters about our faith. We may understand what our faith wants us to do. But if we don't put it into action, we do not live the virtues that are an expression of that faith then we are not acting on the word of God the way Jesus has praised his mother and his brethren. Okay? We cannot only say, yeah, I know that. Oh yeah, I understand that. But I don't put it into practice by living the virtues that are connected to that faith. Then we are not living up to our faith. We are not acting on the word of God. Okay, That is why you know how saints are 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 uh, are determined. What is the what is the yardstick for determining uh, whether a saint is to be declared a saint and whether to 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 uh, to really measure whether somebody has lived up to the standards of sanctity? What is the measure? What is the declaration that that uh, the Vatican makes to declare somebody a saint? What is the yardstick? What does the church examine about the life of a person to be declared a saint? It is not how much he knows the faith. It is not how much he actually understands his theology. That counts a lot. But the expression of that understanding is in the virtues, Jana. Very good. In the virtues. See? So what does the church declare when one is declared to become a saint? The declaration is very simple. That this person, we guarantee that this person that we are now declaring to become a saint is or has lived the virtues to a heroic degree. See? Has lived the virtues to a heroic degree. There is heroism involved. In living the virtues. In other words, you got to keep struggling. You got to keep fighting. You got to perfect those virtues to a heroic degree. It is not enough to just nah, do it a little bit here, a little bit there. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. Nah, that doesn't count. It has to be. We have to live the virtues to a heroic degree. Meaning there's constant effort. There's constant challenge. There's constant overcoming the past obstacle. There's constant lifting the bar and challenging ourselves. That is the way to live the virtues. Every day of our lives, that is the way to act on the word of God. That's the way we become saints. That's the way we become saints. And we cannot let our guard down. We cannot allow the devil to get in the way of this fight and of this struggle and get the better of us. Okay? Our lady is our example. Our lady is our... Oops. <laughs> Time for mass. Okay. Our lady has shown us the way. Listening to the word of God and acting on that word of God with the perfection of her virtues. So if and when we find ourselves struggling to, to live these virtues, let's run to Our Lady. 
Let's run to Our Lady and ask Our Lady, My Lady, please help me to be more responsible in doing my chores, in doing my school work. Help me to be more responsible. My Lady, help me to, to concentrate more on my school work. My Lady, help me to obey the same way you obeyed even your own son, Jesus. Help me to obey. Help me to be more patient. Help me to be more understanding. Help me, help me, help me in all the virtues. Because you listened to the word of God and acted on it. And I want to follow your good example. Let's ask our lady's help. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Why do I seem to be so dark here now? Maybe the lights are not good. Okay, anyway, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.